Right, this video is for English teachers who are considering moving to France to live and work. Uh, I'd just like to basically run through a few things, like your choice of location, administration, types of contracts, uh, general culture and life in France. So, the first thing I'd like to say is that when I first became a qualified teacher, I was talking to my teacher trainer and I said, oh, I'd really like to go and teach in France. And he just looked at me and said, don't. The market is saturated. It's full of English teachers. You won't really find much work and the cost of living is way too high. It's not why people become English teachers. And I really couldn't disagree more. I think there's lots of work in France. I think a lot of people want to learn English. There's lots of work, especially for business English. I think you won't really have a problem finding work if you consider the location very carefully. For example, I wouldn't go to Paris. There are lots and lots of English teachers in Paris. Lots of people want to go and live there. It's romantic, all the stereotypes, but you might have a hard time finding like work in Paris. So the cost of living is also very high. So it might be a great experience for one year, but rarely not more. I also wouldn't go to another big city like Marseille. I think the place is a little bit sketchy. Once you get off the train in the station, you'll see soldiers walking around with guns really on edge. Like you'll always see burnt out cars in the streets. Maybe there's nice areas to Marseille, but uh, it's not somewhere I would like to, to live and work. I would say I've had very positive experiences seeing places like Lyon. This is a biggish city and it has all the good things about France, all the museums, the arts, the food. It's got all the positive things, but it's, uh, it's a nice size, I think. Also, I've had great fun working in Grenoble. This was mainly business English in the French Alps. Um, there's lots of companies locally, so I've been doing business English with these. I've never had a problem finding work. So as I say, it's quite dreamy, it's fun, it's a cool country, but consider the location very, very carefully. Another thing I'd like to talk about is the administration. The administration can be very, very complex. It's quite crazy. For example, for me, I'm what's called an auto entrepreneur. Basically, I'm a small company and I go around to different people who subcontract me. And the money for an auto entrepreneur, it's a little bit better, just a little bit. But um, there's lots of paperwork involved in this. I do all of my own paperwork and it's all in French. So every month for every class I do, I have to write these bills in French. I might have to write about 25 different bills and do all the calculations myself. And I bill my companies and all my clients. And then every three months I have to declare my turnover to the governments. This is again all in French. At the end of the year, you have to declare your annual salary, everything you've earned. This is all in French again, so before you come to France, make sure you have a basic level of French, or at least be really willing to learn how to survive just in basic administration. I think that's very important. Also, you have to remember small things like council tax, and my tax rate, like in general, is 23%. So... If council tax is 1,000 euros and you're already paying 25 almost percent tax, you're really earning a lot less money than you would imagine. If you're earning a 25,000 euros a year, instantly you're only going to pocket, say, 17 or 18,000. So just remember that before you come here as well. The administration can be crazy. Another option, different from me, is to become a vacateur. This is a type of contract which is very casual. You might only do four or five hours a week for one company, but then you do work in other companies and the money adds up. You don't have paperwork here, but the money is slightly less and it's really not secure in my opinion. So I would suggest you look at, you know, being an auto entrepreneur. Maybe I can leave a link or something. They have a website. We'll have a look at that. Okay, so we talked about location. We've talked about the kind of administration and contracts you can have in France. Now I'd just like to talk about life and culture and living in France. I've had a generally positive experience. I really like France, but there are some things that could be quite difficult. The main thing again, make sure you have a good level of French before you get here or be willing to learn French. That could be a huge problem. Like not only in terms of administration, but renting an apartment, paying electricity bills, 
even just getting a phone. People in France don't really speak English very well, your average person in the street for example, so just be prepared to make a bit more of an effort. Also I think other positive things, in Grenoble we have mountains, there's lots of hiking, I think France is a lot more orientated towards the outdoors and nature, that's another good thing, people are generally healthier, like the active lifestyles are really promoted, these are all things that I love, that's great. Things that I don't like about France, or negative experiences I've had. <clears throat> I think French people have a reputation for being a little bit arrogant. I think I've definitely seen some cases of this. This is a level you probably wouldn't see in Britain, for example. Like in the post office, people just cut in queues in supermarkets. Old people rarely just push in front. They think they have the priority. That can be a bit annoying, but I've kind of learned to just deal with it and accept it. But I really think you have to accommodate France. France won't change for you. You have to really make an effort to fit in and just let it fall. Just let it pass. But yeah, a lot of people can be very direct to you in a way maybe you're not used to in your home country. Food. I like the cheese in France. This has a worldwide reputation. But in general, I was a little bit disappointed with the food. The reputation of French food is just fantastic, it's the best in the world, it's incredible, and I admit it's tasty. It tastes very fresh and clean, but <sighs> that's about it. It's like, uh, it's good quality, it's healthier than British food, certainly, but the reputation is so big and they take so much pride in this. I really did expect a little bit more from this. Yeah, just one more thing to note about food is that I think it can be really expensive, especially if you eat out, like in a brasserie or a restaurant. For example, the first place I can think of, I know a place down the road, this is like a very basic food. Like uh, this is actually a place where you can get like typical French food, but also burgers. This is what they specialize in. This is not normal in France. People don't normally eat burgers. But <clears throat> this is the cheapest place I know to eat out. This is 10 euros for a burger. This is like a small kind of restaurant type of place, a brasserie. It's 10 euros for a burger. That's before you add anything on, like a dessert, coffee, anything else like beer. So yeah, I think food it's very good quality in France, but it's probably about four times the price of what I would pay in my hometown of Liverpool, definitely. So, also bear that in mind. <clears throat> I also think that one thing that comes to mind, things like prejudice. I've heard people say they've had bad experiences. I can say, I can think definitely of three or four times in France where I have experienced some type of prejudice. When I open my mouth and speak French, it's obvious instantly that I'm not French. So uh, I have had strange things like in supermarkets or things like this. People might ask you where you're from and kind of give you a weird look. But you have other yeah. general stereotypes like French people smell, they smell of garlic, French women don't shave under their arms. I think this is generally nonsense now. These are all stereotypes from the past and they don't really hold weight today. But of course, you probably see some exceptions. Uh, anything else? Let me think. Yeah. <clears throat> so some other stereotypes. French people are romantic. I would say definitely not. I think the guys can be very vulgar sometimes. And I found quite a lot of the women uptight about being around men. Or like, I also find that uh, they have quite big tempers. They can really get angry. Like, uh, sometimes they're really not diplomatic if you have a girlfriend or something from France. But I think, from what I've seen personally in my experiences, this isn't just France, it's Mediterranean women in general, so <laughs> they can be a bit crazy. Another stereotype is that French people are lazy. I think this is not really true. I've seen a lot of people really, really work hard in France. Sometimes they're, they're working hours, they're not being paid for. But then again, most people I've met we're really proactive people that have management positions, like middle managements or top management. So this is definitely true in this case, but maybe at the bottom, like just a basic job, maybe in supermarkets, maybe that's different. They're looking more for their break, but I think that counts for anyone nowadays. They don't really want to work their job. Okay, well, 
that's about it. I think we've talked about location and how it's important to consider your options carefully. We've talked about administration types of contracts. Make sure you're prepared to make an effort with French. We've also talked about life in France, prices of food, maybe some prejudice, and uh, general culture of France. I hope that's helpful. Maybe if you're looking for a job, I wish you good luck and take care. Thank you.